Hello students, welcome back to your geography class. I am Miss Jenny Shah and today we begin with the fourth chapter, Climate. In this chapter, we will understand climate influences and human activity involvement, that is movement, food, dressing and shelter. We will also understand the climate variations in different parts of India. And we will explore the reason for such climatic variation. What is climate? Climate is a characteristic condition of the atmosphere near the Earth's surface at a certain place on earth. It refers to the sum total of weather conditions and variations over a large area for a long period of time. It is the long term weather of that area which remains same for at least 30 years. So climate can be described as the general and composite weather conditions and variation over a long period of time and over a large area. So the kind of climate remains constant in a particular place for at least 30 to 35 years. When you talk about climate, it is basically, uh, you saw in the last class, we have learned about the landforms of India. So there are uh, two or three basic elements that one learns about the natural element of uh, environment of any area. Okay, so um, in this chapter, we are going to talk about the atmospheric conditions. Atmospheric conditions that prevail uh, in a particular area. So we will discuss things like why do we wear woolens in December? Or why is it hot and uncomfortable in the month of May? Why does it rain in June, July? Okay, so all these answers we are going to be looking into. So climate refers to the sum total of the weather conditions and variation over the large area for a long period of time that is more than 30 to 35 years. Then what is what is weather? Okay, weather refers to the state of atmosphere over an area at any point of time. The elements of both weather and climate are same. It is the combination of temperature, humidity, precipitation, wind, cloudiness, and other atmospheric conditions at a specific time. So elements that uh, make uh, elements of both weather and climate are same. That is temperature, humidity, precipitation, wind, cloudiness, okay, and all the other atmospheric conditions. But weather and climate are two different things. Climate is the sum total of the weather conditions. Whereas weather refers to the state of atmosphere over an area at any point of time. So weather refers to the state of atmosphere. So in these two states of atmosphere, their common elements, that is in climate and weather, the common elements, that is temperature, pressure, wind, humidity, precipitation are all same. Weather is a variable entity. It varies slowly, but it can also change very quickly, even violently within just a few hours. In spite of the fickleness of the weather, there is always some commonality for some days, weeks, or even months. During some months, the days are hot, and not even a single speck of cloud is seen in the sky. In contrast, some other months, 
sky is overcast with clouds and it rains very very often on the basis of these broad weather conditions a year is divided into seasons such as summer winter raining the season is one of the divisions of the year associated with the particular type of weather the word monsoon when you look at indians right now we are in the monsoon season so this word monsoon is derived from the arabic word mausim which literally means seasons monsoon refers to the seasonal reversal in the wind direction during the year the world is divided into a number of climatic conditions and climatic regions the climate of in the climate of india is described as monsoon type that is seasonal reversal in the wind this type of climate is found in south and southeast asia but there are perceptible regional variations in climatic conditions within the country so the world is segregated into a number of climatic regions the climate of india is called monsoon type in asia this kind of climate is found in the south and southeast however regional variations in the country in terms of the climate differ in summers the mercury is very high like it can touch 50 degrees celsius in rajasthan whereas it's only 20 degrees celsius in pahalgam in jammu and kashmir in winters at ras in jammu and kashmir the temperature goes as low as 45 degrees celsius while in the thiruvananthapuram it is only 22 degrees celsius and this is at the same time similarly temperatures also vary in thar desert it is 50 degrees celsius in the afternoon and it goes down to 15 degrees celsius at night however there is no noticeable difference between the temperatures of andaman and nicobar islands or kerala at night so there are perceptible regional variations in the climatic conditions within a country and two important elements are the temperature and the precipitation which varies from place to place and season to season in certain places there is a wide difference between the day and night temperature like we spoke about the thar desert uh, where the day temperature may rise to 50 degrees and it drops to 15 degrees in the same night on the other hand there is hardly any difference in the day and night temperatures of andaman nicobar or in kerala but if you look at precipitation there are variations not only in the form in type of precipitation but also the amount and the seasonal distribution so we spoke about the difference in temperature we are at precipitation so a precipitation varies in form type and amount and seasonal distribution it is in the form of snowfall in the upper part of himalayas it rains in the rest of the country the annual precipitation varies from 400 centimeters in meghalaya to less than 10 centimeters in ladakh and western rajasthan most parts of the country receive rainfall from june to september but tamil nadu coast 
gets rainfall during October and November. Rainfall generally decreases from east to west in the northern plain. These variations have given rise to a variety in the lives of people, their food, their clothes, and their houses. Vegetation can affect both temperature and the precipitation pattern in an area. So just to sum up what we have done, we know that there is uneven distribution of precipitation. And while the precipitation in Himalayas is in the form of rainfall, in other parts of the country, uh, it's rainfall. And in Himalayas, it is snowfall. Okay, And also, the amount can vary. So it could be 400 centimeters in Meghalaya, and it could be less than 10 centimeters in Ladakh. Okay, The seasonal contrasts are more in the interior of the country. There is decrease in rainfall as we move from east to west and northern plains. And these variations have given rise uh, to different, to so many varieties in the life of people in the form of food, or food that they eat will change, the clothes they wear will change, the houses they live in change. Um, all these changes take place. Now, these are different uh, factors that affect climate. Okay, these are the six major controls of the climate in any place. Any place, uh, climate of any place majorly depends or majorly, uh, the major factors, the major controllers are these. They are latitude, altitude, pressure and wind system, distance from the sea, ocean currents, and relief features. Relief features is the last chapter we have done. If you all remember, we have just finished the physiographic divisions of India. So that also play a major role in controlling the climate of a place. Okay, so what I want you all to do on this slide is you, I want you all to take the initials, that is L, A, P, O, D, R, and figure out some nice acronym or some nice small abbreviation, some small, uh, you know, short form that will help you remember all these factors of climatic control. I don't, I am not going to give it to you all. I want you all to figure it out and it's easy. Okay. Now, if you look at the earth, earth is circular in shape. It's round in shape, correct? The planet earth is circle. It's round. So due to the curvature of the earth, the amount of solar energy that is received at different places of earth, it differs. Okay, it varies and it, this varies according to the latitude because we measure it according to the latitude. What is latitude? We have Earth, Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn, right? All these are the latitudes and longitudes. We have the uh, uh, Arctic Circle and the Antarctic Circle. So all these are the uh, latitudes and all these um, help us understand climate better. So as a result, the air temperature generally decreases from the equator towards the pole, obviously. So what will happen is when you are near the equator, you're going to get the most amount of heat that is going to be the hottest air region on Earth. And then as and when you start moving towards the poles, you hope you're going to become colder. So due to the curvature of Earth, the amount of solar energy received varies according to the latitude. As a result, the air temperature generally decreases from the equator towards the poles. Next we had was altitude. Now what is altitude? Altitude is the height from Earth when you go upwards. So as one goes from the surface of Earth, 
to higher altitudes, higher heights, the atmosphere becomes less dense and the temperature decreases. Therefore, the hills are cooler during summers. So this can be a question, give reason, why are the hills cooler than summers? Because as, as, we, go, as we go higher from the surface of Earth, the atmosphere becomes less dense and the temperature decreases. The hills are so cooler during summers. Okay? Understood how altitude will play uh, a major part in controlling the climate? Next, the pressure and wind system of any area. The pressure and wind system of any area depend on the latitude and altitude of the place, for sure. Thus, it influences the temperature and rainfall pattern. Absolutely true. So, uh, pressure and wind, this both depends on the latitude and altitude. You know, in the same area, if, uh, if you're at the foot of the mountains, you know the wind is not, is, may not be blowing as fast as the wind will be blowing when you're on top of that mountain. So altitude plays a different and latitude depends on the pressure. Air pressure will depend on the latitude, whether you're closer to the equator or you are away from the equator. So pressure and wind system, they depend on the latitude and altitude of the place. And so these, the pressure and wind system, these two, they influence the temperature and rainfall pattern. Finally, uh, if you look at the distance, not finally, as you look at the distance from the sea, so the sea um, gives a moderating influence on the climate. The sea exerts a very moderating influence on the climate. As and when the distance from the sea will increase, as and in all we go, keep going far, its moderating influences decreases and the people extreme, uh, experience extreme weather condition. So what does this basically mean is if you're, if you're living on the coastal area, you're living close to the sea, you will have a very moderate climate, okay? That means you're not going to face any extremes that is, you know, uh, zero degrees in winter. This is an example. It does not mean that all the places away from the sea will experience this, no. What I'm trying to say is moderating is, uh, it's not fluctuating a lot. It is close to each other. This, the heat and the cold, whether they are very close to each other, it is not very extreme. Okay, but when, uh, as the distance from the sea increases, so as you go to the interiors of the place, whichever place you're talking about, you're, you're moving away from the sea, that time the moderating influence of the sea will become less. And so the people over there will, ex will experience extreme weather condition. And this kind of a condition is called as continual, con Continent, continentality, continentality, meaning very hot during summers and very cold during winters. Okay. Next factor is ocean currents. Now in ocean currents, uh, ocean currents are normally the currents that are in the ocean and they can be either cold or they can, uh, it can either be warm or it can be uh, uh, cold. Okay, so ocean currents along with the onshore winds, so on the land we have winds and inside the oceans we have currents. So both of these together, they affect the climate of the coastal areas. So any coastal area which has a warm or a cold current flowing past, it will be warm or cold if the winds are onshore. So depending on that current, the winds will be hot or depending on the cold current, the winds will be cool. So any coastal area with warm uh, currents will have warm winds and any coastal area with cold currents will have cold uh, winds. Okay. Finally, we come back to what we did last class, last chapter, what we have learned relief features. And how do the relief features play a major role in determining the climate of a place? So if you look at high mountains, the high mountains become barriers for the cold or hot winds. They also cause 
precipitation, if they are high enough and they lie in the path of the rain bearing winds, then they will start causing precipitation. The leeward si side of the mountain will always remain dry. Okay, so we so which are the so which are the six? Um, can we can you name the six uh, major factors that control the climate of any place? Quickly take a pen and paper and write it down if you remember. Relief is right in front of you. Yes, but can you name the other five? Come on, I give you all twenty seconds to write. You can easily do this. Come on, come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Okay, I'm gonna tell you the answer now. You're still writing pause. Okay. First is latitude. Second was altitude. Then we have pressure and wind system. Then we have distance from the sea. Then ocean currents. And the last one is relief features. So these are six major controls of the climate of any place. Okay, now comes research work for y'all. Research work or, you know, use your mind, apply the learning that you have taken from here. And before we move further into the chapter, what I want y'all to do is, uh, in your notebooks, I want y'all, this is your thinking, okay? So this, is, this doesn't need, don't refer to textbook for this, please. Uh, yeah, you can do some little research that you require, but don't take direct answers from somewhere for this particular part. Now, you all have understood which are the six major factors of uh, that influence the climate of any place. Okay, so we are we are going to be thinking about India. So, can you um, can you write down how these six uh, things? Uh, influence the climate of India. So how do you think latitude affects the climate of India? In what way? Uh, what does it mean? What does what do you understand by it? What about altitude? What about pressure and wind system? Uh, what about the distance from sea? What do you mean by ocean currents and relief features? I'll uh, show you all a small video which will sum up the learning we have done today and will give you some information for this answer. Okay, so you can refer to that video again when you're writing down the answer or you can write down the notes right now, your choice, or you can do your own research. Uh, I'm not looking at lengthy pages of information. You know, just one page, you can write all the six points down and however you think that particular thing affects the Indian climate or influences the Indian climate, how do you think altitude uh, uh, influences India's climate? And just one, two lines, maximum three lines. Okay, so this is your own work that you will do. And just like before, I have told you, message it to me so that I can see it. In this video, we're going to quickly understand what are the factors affecting India's climate. Now, generally speaking, I'm not just talking about India. There are six major components that controls the climate of any place. They are latitude, altitude, pressure and wind system, distance from the sea, ocean currents and relief features. Let's understand each one of them. The first one is latitude. Due to the curvature of the earth, the amount of solar energy received varies depending on the latitude. That's why you'll see the temperature decreases as we go away from the equator towards the poles. This is the equatorial region. From Tropic of Cancer in the Northern Hemisphere to Tropic of Capricorn in the Southern Hemisphere. There's another name to it called as Tropical Zone or Torrid Zone. As we go further away, we have the temperate zone or the temperate region. This is the area lying in between Tropic of Cancer and Arctic Circle in the Northern Hemisphere. And in the Southern Hemisphere, it is between Tropic of Capricorn and Antarctic Circle. Now, this area has a pleasant climate. That's why you'll find most of the tourist destination in the world located at temperate regions. As we go even further away, we have the frigid zone. It's cold freezing out here. This area is in between the Arctic Circle and the North Pole in the Northern Hemisphere. And in the Southern Hemisphere, it is between Antarctic Circle and South Pole. So these were all the latitudinal changes that affects the climate of a place. The second factor is altitude. Altitude means height. The more you go above the ground, that is from the surface of the Earth to higher altitudes, the temperature decreases. Because the concentration of air molecules decreases, we also call it as thin air. That's why when you go to hill stations, it's cool out there. The third factor is pressure and wind system. 
By pressure we mean high and low pressure system. Always remember, air moves from high pressure to low pressure area. The best way to understand this, I have given this illustration before, so I'm going to use it again. Switch on the AC in your room and leave the door open. You will feel the cool air going out of the room and this is because the environment outside your room is warm and it's attracting the cool air molecules towards it. Hence, by this example, you can also understand this. Landmass gets heated faster than water bodies. And due to that, a low pressure zone is created at the land surface, which attracts cool air molecules from the sea or ocean causing rainfall and changes in the temperature. The fourth factor is distance from the sea. Now if you are residing at coastal areas, you will notice there is hardly any change in the weather condition. I mean you will be constantly facing the wind from the sea, so there isn't going to be much differences in the weather condition. But as you move away from the coastal areas towards central part of the landmass, you will start to witness extreme weather changes like very hot during summer and very cold during winters. This condition is known as continentality. The fifth factor is ocean currents. It is a continuous movement of ocean water from one place to another. Ocean currents are created by wind, water temperature, salt content and the gravitational pull of sun and the moon. Generally there is two types of ocean currents, cold and warm currents. You can see them in this picture. The red arrow indicates warm currents and the blue one are cold currents. If you notice most of the warm currents are near the equatorial region. That's where the sun rays falls directly and are found in abundance. So the theory is these warm and cold current influences the local winds of the nearby landmass and causes change in the climatic condition. For example, with warm currents the landmass face warm and humid climate. And the last factor is relief features. In geography the meaning of relief is typical high and low lying areas like mountains, plateau, plain, deserts etc. High mountains act as barriers for cold or hot winds. Just like we have the Himalayas that protect us from the cold chilly wind of the Arctic. And it is also due to these mountains, precipitation takes place. One such example would be the mountains of Western Ghats that lie in the path of the rain-bearing southwest monsoon winds. So these were the six factors that affects the climate of India, not just India, any place on earth. If you want to see more of such educational content, make sure you're subscribed. By doing so, you'll get an alert when my next video comes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. This I end today's class. Stay home, stay safe, take care. Keep learning. Thank you.